Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this is an episode I've been waiting for for a long time, and I'm sure you have too, where we finally get some colour on the Al Ferrari, and uh, you guys will get to find out what colour that is. All right guys, welcome back. And it's been two and a half years now of working on this, which uh, those of you who haven't been following it, is my 1974 Alfa Romeo 2000 GTV that I have put a 2000 model Ferrari 360 3.6 litre V8 engine into. And uh, it's been a whole lot of work getting it to this point. And it is finally that time when I get to start actually doing the final sand and putting the color on the car. And um, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and do think about subscribing if you're new. Um, it does help us out and uh, hit the notifications and all that sort of stuff. Today, uh, the first thing is I've, I've got to start obviously sanding back this uh, last coat of high fill primer. Uh, and I'm going to be starting with the engine base. So that means getting in, removing the bonnet, and start tidying it up, sanding it all back. I need to get it all back down to uh, 400 grit sandpaper. 400 grit is, um, is fine enough. You don't want to go too fine when you're sanding back the, uh, the primer. Um, some people go 800,000 grit. The trouble is, is that when you get that, you're almost polishing the surface, and there's no tooth for the... Um, the paint to stick in. 400 grit, you will not see any scratches. It will easily be covered with 400 grit um, sandpaper and there's better tooth. So basically the paint will stick better. Um, you can have issues where you actually sand it too much. A, it's a lot more work, but B, you sand it too much and the paint can actually delaminate, um, particularly with uh, putting things like PPF, you know, paint protection film on it and things like that these days, or wraps, and you try and peel it off and the paint will actually come with it. So you want a bit of tooth. So let's start pulling this apart and sanding, but um, hopefully we can skip through the sanding bit and we can get to the, uh, the paint bit. All right, so I've gone through, I spent uh, pretty much the entire day yesterday sanding the engine bay and just doing little final touch-ups, anything that I wasn't quite happy with, little bits of spot putty, and um, I've just gone over and hit it again with a little bit of etch primer over some of those bits that I sanded through a little bit. Um, I'll probably do a couple more spots in a second. And I also did the cow panel. So uh, there, again, there are a couple little bits that I missed on the cow panel that I've just gone through and just done light little touch-ups on and uh, and sanded it back getting this ready because I'm gonna paint this at the same time as I paint the engine bay I can't fit a lot in the booth at once and I'm not gonna try and bite off a huge amount of work in the um, uh, in the first instance but I want to try and paint the engine bay and this cow panel today but before I do that, I've got a little bit more sanding and then I wanna get through and paint some of the, uh, the bits that are gonna stay black, get the black on it now so that it's, uh, it's just easier for later. So uh, let's get into that. So I'm vacuuming the walls and the floors of the spray booth to keep as much dust down as possible. All right, so I've just done a quick masking inside the front nose cone so I can get that black in where I want it to, but I've left, uh, I've masked up all the bits that I want to make the body color, and uh, I've also got the, uh, the cow panel that I'm going to be doing, and I'm doing the underside of that black as well, and a couple other bits. So I'm going to go now, start just uh, doing some black, and, uh, and then we can hopefully get to the stage where we can mask up and start painting the color. Yeah! So you can see the underside of these panels and inside the nose cone, I'm just doing a coat of GMH black. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm masking up for painting colour in the engine bay. I'm not going to town on the masking because any overspray that happens to get on the body of the car is getting sanded off anyway. And now I'm thoroughly cleaning the engine bay with wax and grease remover. Uh, I do this a couple of times just to make sure everything's good. And I'm starting to realize how difficult this is gonna to be to actually spray. All right, <laughs> this is actually it. This is the time. I've actually gone through, clean everything up now. Everything's masked. Everything's ready to go for at least the engine bay and the uh, front cow, which is over here out of the camera. It's time to put some paint on the car, put some color on the car. I am so excited, it's been so long getting to this stage and you guys have been giving me colour suggestions for months and particularly last week uh, or two weeks ago I asked you guys to put in your suggestions uh, and or your guesses as to what I would actually be painting the car and there was a heap of responses and um, I want to go through and give you uh, a bit of a rundown now of what the, uh, the guesses were first. So. Um, not surprisingly, the first colour choice, the, the most popular colour choice at 33% was red. The second most popular choice was yellow at uh, 18%. Uh, the third was green at 14%. White was 13%. Blue, 5%. Silver or grey was, uh, was 4%. Purple, 3%. Black, 3%. Tartan, 3%. Tartan. Um, brown, 2.5%. Uh, 1% was orange and uh, there was a half percent for pink. So uh, quite a range of different colors there and uh, I just wanna go through my thought process on the colors and why I actually went the way that I did. Um, first of all, a bit of a, a rant from, of mine is that there is zero chance that I will paint any car ever in the monochrome monotony that is on the roads these days. Every single car, or basically if you look anywhere on the roads, all you see are silver, black, white cars everywhere, or gray, black, white cars everywhere. And it's just, we need color. Bring some color back. It's just any color. Even people ordering sort of special new, you know, 911 GT3 RSs. Don't order it in silver. That's gotta be the most boring Camry color ever. Get it in something. It doesn't have to be bright orange. It can be dark blue, navy blue or something. Just give it something that's a color, something different than the endless monotony of those colors. So I will never paint any of those car, any car, white, black or silver. Cause it just, no, we need color. So, uh, and any of you who've watched my channel will know that I like colors. Um, so we'll wipe them out of the, uh, of the list. Um, let's go through some of the other colors. We've got um, tartan. I don't think I've got the time to paint it tartan. I know you, some of you guys like the, uh, the controversial interior on Harry, my 911, but uh, no, I'm not gonna paint the outside tartan, so that one can go. Um, the, um, um, some of the other options are, you know, orange, I didn't want it the same as, uh, as Harry, and I don't think it would really work. Um, so it really brings me down to only a few sort of options that are left. Um, green was actually a, um, a reasonable consideration at one stage because the car was originally green. It was sort of a, a light metallic green. And I think it could have actually been uh, quite a reasonable color. And I do like green cars, but um, I didn't go that way on this build. Basically, what it really came down to was the fact that with a Ferrari engine, I've got to think about the fact that I've got the Ferrari engine uh, on show from outside the car, so you really need to match the color in with that. So it really limits my colors, and I really think with the Ferrari engine, it should really be a Ferrari color. And Ferrari only really has two good colors as far as I'm concerned. Now, red would be a fantastic option for this car. Alphas look great in red. Just look at them all. Almost every other alpha is red. There are just so many red alphas. Red is a great color for these cars, but they're all red. There's too many red alphas. It could not be just another red alpha. So if I went to Auto Italia, which is a big Italian car show in Australia here, 
it would just be another red alpha and uh, that's not what this is about. This is, this is not just another red alpha. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, it couldn't be a red alpha. So I only had one choice of color. That's really what it came down to is I really had one choice and um, Jürgen from uh, Sweden did this amazing render. He's done so many renders for me and he did this amazing re render reveal. So you can now see what the Alferrari will look like as a yellow Alferrari. Now, uh, as you can see, I've actually done it with silver stripes over the bonnet, and originally I was gonna do it in tricolore, um, so sort of stripe through the center of the car, and I did get Jürgen to do a bunch of renders like that, and it just didn't seem to work. It didn't really match what I was looking for, and I played around with the silver, and once the silver came through, it was perfect. Something else I need to mention is that I'll be painting the inlet plenums yellow to match the body much better. We don't want a Ronald McDonald car. I think it'd be the perfect finishing touch to the engine bay. Another big shout out to Jürgen. He's done an amazing job of his renders and um, he's not on Facebook or Instagram. I can't shout him out. I can't send you guys anywhere. And any of you who want him to do a render, he's not interested. He doesn't want to do it. He just does it because he enjoys it uh, as a hobby. It's not something that uh, he wants to do for money or, or anything. So um, thank you very much, Jürgen. I am very happy with the renders and um, that's it. So um, <laughs> I wonder how many of you are going to be upset. There's lots of people who said you're going to disown me if it's not red. There is zero way this car was ever going to be red. I could not do it red. Red is not going to work for me. Um, not that I don't like red, but it can't be just another red alpha. Just fading into the crowd or in that small area. So, um, all right, time to go and mix up some paint. Okay, so now it's time to actually start mixing up the paint to actually put onto the car. I actually heated the booth um, for probably the last 40 minutes or so, so it's nice and warm in there. The work metal is nice and warmed up, even though uh, it's only about uh, 10 degrees ambient temperature here. Um, and I'm about to paint color. So I'm using the same type of paint that I used on Harry, my 911, and also um, the 680G, which is my Datsun 240Z which is concept paint and I'm doing this as a, uh, a clear over base type paint job. So basically it means that I'm gonna paint the color on and then add the clear after and the clear has a hardener in it. Whereas you can actually do a solid color like this yellow as um, a 2K solid where you can add hardener into the color so you don't actually have to clear it. Um, that's not what I'm doing in this case. As I said, I'm doing a, a clear over base and because yellow is quite a light color, it actually comes with a uh, specific ground coat first. So there's actually for the uh, yellow fly, which is the exact yellow that I'm doing, it's the Ferrari yellow uh, that you would have seen from the 60s and um, from the 355s and you know that, that iconic bright yellow uh, Ferrari color, which is what I really like. Um, the ground coat's got to go on first. Uh, so I'll mix that up, do the ground coat, make sure I've got good coverage of the ground coat. Then I add the color, make sure that there's good coverage of the color, uh, and then go over it with the two pack clear. So um, I'm gonna start mixing up now, go through the uh, sort of the basic process for those of you who um, haven't really sort of seen it come together. And I'll go into more detail later on with the uh, other videos as well. If you guys have got any questions or anything I missed on, uh, on what I do on painting these cars. Now, I am not a painter, I am not an expert. I've painted a few cars now um, of my own, but uh, yeah, definitely not a professional. I'm uh, just uh, doing what I know and what's worked for me. So, um, all right, first things first, let's start mixing up the ground coat. Uh, you gotta give it a really good mix for about 10 minutes or so to actually get everything, uh, make sure everything is mixed through extremely thoroughly. You don't want any lumps, you don't want any separation. So you get a very consistent uh, mix of paint through the whole thing. So I'll start mixing and come back to you once I uh, actually start uh, pouring it in the gun. So this no mix base coat is actually quite thick in the, uh, in the tin and it uses a sort of 80% to 100% um, 
reducer on top. So you've really got a concentrated pigment there. I, when I mix the, uh, the paint up, um, I usually mix it by eye mostly. I mean, I did use the measurements, but um, uh, I generally try and look for myself for something that's about the consistency of milk, maybe just a little bit thicker than milk. You don't want it as thin as water and you don't want it too thick where it's sort of like uh, sort of uh, like cream or something like that. It's got to be it's got to be just a bit thicker than water and uh, and just have a nice uh, sort of trickle. Uh, I always do a test spray somewhere first just to sort of get a uh, a bit of a feel of how it's how it's going. Uh, I'm going to be using my uh, Iwata. Uh, this is a W400 uh, I water, I think it's a 1.2, 1.4 mil tip, I can't remember uh, off the top of my head. Um, I really like this gun, uh, nice and easy to use. So uh, um, I'm going to uh, set up now. I personally just run the compressor um, flat out and adjust the, uh, the, the pressure with the, uh, on the gun to, uh, to sort of dial it up or down to get the pressure right. And unfortunately with painting, I said I'm not an expert, but uh, I, it, I do it more by feel and it's just from practice. So just the more you play around with it and you sort of work out how um, thick or thin you want it. Uh, when I spray the base coat, first layer of base coat, I almost always just do a bit of a dust coat, go reasonably light. If you get um, fish eyes anywhere or any of those sort of things where um, the paint sort of makes a little, looks, makes a little dot or something like that, stop let it flash off and you can go back to it again and uh, and sometimes you can just get away with it and just just dust on a couple of coats and uh, you will get rid of that and you won't have that issue if you go wet straight out of the box you're much more likely to have issues so um, that's one of my big tips that uh, that i always find is go um, light on the first coat it helps out uh, the further coats it makes it much easier and then you can just hook it on after that and it's good so uh, let's do some painting So this is the ground coat for yellow fly, uh, which I'm painting first, just to get a nice coverage and give a couple of coats of this. This is actually the first coat of the actual color. Mixing up some clear coat and now getting the first coat of clear and you can sort of see the gloss starting to come into it now. All right, so um, it is all done and uh, all yellow. Definitely a very difficult thing to paint and I did get a bunch of runs along this edge, along here. There's a couple at the back there. Another one here, another one here. Uh, some more over here. But uh, overall, uh, I'm really happy. The color, I think, is fantastic. It's definitely bright. It's definitely bright. Um, down the bottom here, I, did, I was gonna originally paint all this bottom black, but I decided to do it in the yellow. I think it looks good. I didn't tidy up the welds or anything because you're not gonna see anything from here down anyway. The engine actually, this, even this cutout here is actually um, to make the engine fit. So it is, it's very tight. So all you're gonna see is this top edge. So I have to come back and cut the runs out later. Um, but I think this engine bay with the yellow uh, inlet plenums on the engine is just going to be amazing and fantastic and uh, yes hopefully I can get the runs cut out. Um, as far as mistakes go besides the runs I did touch it just here which I think I can touch up later I can respray this part uh, when I do the outside of the car so that's easy enough to touch up but the rest of it's not too bad. This panel here though um, because it was underneath the, uh, the inlet vent there's there's a lot of dust in it. I don't know whether the camera is going to pick it up. But there's lots of these little dark spots and things in it, which is just not good enough. And there's a big hair in it here. I made the mistake that I didn't wet the floor. So that's something I'm going to have to rectify next time. And this I'm probably going to, I'll just respray. I stopped um, after two coats of clear because I thought I can just sand it back and give it a light to uh, another, another spray of color and clear and it should come up a million bucks. So uh, overall, quite happy. All right, so there it is. We actually have some color on the car and it is, it's bright. It's bright yellow and I think it's gonna look really good. It's going to stand out in a crowd, which is uh, what 
I always wanted. I mean, this is not a standard alpha, so it doesn't need to blend in with all the other standard alphas. A uh, few runs and stuff for me to cut back in the engine bay, but uh, I should be able to tidy them up, and any touch-ups I have, I'll be able to do that later. If I have to even just respray the top part of the engine bay, it's going to be so much easier than getting down in the depths. The, the issue I had, because I have to reach over the top, there was no easy way to get in and paint the engine bay. Um, Definitely a very difficult part to, to get to, which is again why I had sort of runs. And also the lighting in my booth is fine for a, the outside of a car. It, it could be definitely be better, but um, particularly because the lights are all on the outside, um, actually when I'm spraying the, uh, the side LEDs and everything are on as well when the uh, fans are on. But on the inside of the engine bay, the light is, is definitely worse. So it's harder to see. And, uh, and particularly with the bright color, it's harder to see where the runs were coming up. But uh, Overall, I think it came out good. I'm happy. Uh, so uh, I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys. Enzo Ferrari had always disliked mid-engine cars until Ferrari began to lose its dominance in the late 1950s. From 1960, Ferrari began to use the mid-engine layout in some of its race cars. In 1967, Ferrari's first mid-engine road cars were released under the lower cost brand Dino. It wasn't until 1973 that the first mid-engine road car was released with the 365 GT4 BB or Berlinetta Boxer. Designed to rival the newly released Lamborghini Mura and the Lamborghini Contage, one of Jeff's favourites, it was a big change from Ferrari's previously designed cars. And although it shared its name with the Daytona, the engine layout was radically different. This BB had a 4.4 litre flat 12 engine mounted longitudinally, not transversely like the Dino, making 380 horsepower. The engine shared its internal dimensions with the Daytona V12, but the engine was spread out 180 degrees. So although it's referred to as a boxer, it is actually a flat 12. Only 387 of the 365 GT4 BBs were built, making it the rarest of all of the BBs. All right, guys, well, there you have it. We actually have the uh, color revealed and on the car. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. If you love it, you hate it, write a comment below. Uh, the comments actually really help out the, uh, the algorithm getting the video shared and things like that as well. So yeah, blast me if you feel like it. Tell me I've picked the wrong color. Tell me you picked the, I picked the right color. Whatever you think, uh, I'd like to hear it down below. Uh, overall, I am very happy. I love the color. It's gonna be bright. It's gonna be bright. But you guys have seen my other cars. You know I like bright colors. Who likes a bright color? And yeah. I knew it was gonna be yellow, but I didn't expect it to be so gorgeous. I love it. I love it. It makes me want to eat those um, little banana lollies that are really, yeah. like, look so <laughs> juicy. But I'm not a lolly person. I don't really like lollies or sweets. But <laughs> that's, this makes you hungry. Yeah. <laughs> it's me too. gorgeous. I, I, yeah. I, am, I am very happy and looking forward to the rest of it coming together. So uh, hopefully you guys will join me for that. And uh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to keep, well, support Jeff, follow him a day early. No, watch the videos a day early. Follow him on Patreon, help him out, no ads. And like and subscribe. Like you said, he loves reading your comments. So that's it. Yeah, let him know what you think. <laughs> right. He's no stranger to controversy. Exactly. <laughs> You've seen the interior in Harry. All right, guys. Uh, we'll uh, see you on the next one. Bye, guys.